everybody, this podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsReviewRelease.com. CardsReviewRelease.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOCOBROS to save 10% off your next order. And I'm Sam Snipe Prime. And I'm Zach Burrell. And today we have uh, Jesse James, who's going to be running the show. Um, he's doing quite well. He's quite nervous, but I think he's <laughs> going to get through this. So, Jesse, you had some questions for us, right? Now, I know you're sad about Cody not being here, right? Um, <laughs> man, <laughs> he was sad earlier. Now he's like, you just ready to go? <laughs> like, down to business. All right. All right. Take it away. All right. So... Um, what was, like, the deck that you were most, like, difficult playing with? Like, playing the- against? Yeah. Uh, easily, uh, anything that had, uh, a way to mill me out. <laughs> uh, like, I lost to a deck that had Riku in it, so it just, you know, maybe mill every turn, because I couldn't kill him faster. <laughs> he just had blockers. Uh, there was a mono wind deck that didn't have the, uh... Riku, but it had other ways to kind of force me to draw more cards and kept, you know, wiping my board with my Vikings and stuff. So, drew a lot of cards against them, milled out too. So, definitely win base decks. For me, I would say it's the aggro decks like Gregory Coles, for example. I mean, <laughs> you guys saw that in the uh, quarterfinals. Anything that's when they put like very constant pressure on monsters, I don't want to see that play. So, especially things with haste and Alua. Yeah. <laughs> What about you, man? You play. You play too. What do? What did you find the well, toughest decks? What really was the toughest deck was like Yuri Chilinko Fasoya. Yuri Chilinko Fasoya. Who yeah. played that? Wait, the same deck. Lawrence. Lawrence. Well, no, he didn't play Ch- Yuri Chilinko, but it was like some. It was milling me out and stuff. Yeah, he had. Chilinko? Yeah, there's no Chilinka, no Yuri in his deck. He was just. Oh no, he did have Chilinka, just no Yuri. He was just playing uh, Fasoya like. All three of like all Halicarnassus. He had three Thena, three Valfor, yeah. all the the two so, drop Yuna. So you would go for Soya, take a point of damage, attack for the win. Because oh, okay. I don't to, because he would just dole and freeze my four characters. What was he doling and freezing with? with? Like, I think he's mixing up two matchups or names or yeah, something. Because so. Lawrence Oliver had uh, for Soya, no Yuri, but there were a bunch of people with the uh, Yuri deck as well. Yeah. So, so what were your other questions? What um, what was the deck that like you could beat so easily? <laughs> oh, <laughs> for me, the easiest matchups were any type of control deck that was a little bit slower. Um, uh, Earth, Earth, Wind, Wind, Water, those types of decks, pretty, pretty easy for me. Um. Hunter's deck was a lot slower than most decks, uh, and I still lost, but I feel like that matchup was probably pretty good for me and that I drew pretty poorly. Um, it seemed like, actually, I drew really poorly that matchup. Um, mix it with Hunter being a really good player, and uh, yeah, that matchup felt like it should have been easy when I'm looking at the list comp- comparatively, but it actually wasn't, so mm-hmm. I don't know. I have to play that one a few more times to see. I will help. But, <laughs> uh let's see i'm trying to remember so there was one game that i did very well in um my other win was slow and not easy uh, I, i'm a two and four spoiler um decked out three times uh i'd say the easiest matchups though oh man what was that guy playing i think it was an uh, i think it was an earth-based deck so he was playing like one big thing at a time and i was able to just like veritas it magic pot ver- get rid of your next guy you put out and just that kind of thing i was able to one for one a lot faster than he did and then eventually started two for oneing and then i started winning and i ended up uh like turn two layla viking actually i got five points of damage in with that so nice do you have any other what other questions do you have jesse um what was the deck that you seen most at the crystal cup Ooh. for me it was mono lightning i think i played against three mono lightning players I lost to one of them, and I beat the other two. Uh, I think the matchup depends on how aggressive they are for me. If if they try to play very aggressive, if they're or if they're playing like Alua Alba, like aggro, 
um it can it can differ but i i saw the most lightning um but the most decks i saw in the room was actually mono water that's what i was gonna say so, so it was interesting i got paired against lightning the most um i saw a lot of mono water i think i would have preferred to play against mono water lists but me too. Eh, yeah, i don't know maybe me too i'm not sure actually i uh i saw no lightning at all actually uh but i saw i think twice i was against um uh, heavy at least heavy water or if not mono water um i was against Yuna h even without a water deck too they uh it was mono wind and he had charlotta and his splash card was Yuna h <laughs> so he was he had like the chaos wheels and stuff that uh, did pretty well against my Paratoss. but what else? i saw a lot of like i saw a lot of um ice decks yeah. To dole free stuff. I'll say, which is a pretty rough uh, chain of matchups for you. So, what were you, so uh, why don't you let everybody know what you were playing? Um, I was playing Mono Earth, like 7 and 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what was the best card for you, Jesse? Um, probably Baron on EX. <laughs> Specifically on EX. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But not Baron, not actually playing it and attacking, just on no, when it hit EX? They would never look at attack, they would always. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair that's and fair and the other card was galoof yeah it can't be broken on my turn so then i could just like, keep attacking in killing all their guys and then... do you use the ability to where they can you force them to block often yeah i use that against like i use that when i played like gary and stuff and Cholinka. it feels pretty good <laughs> oh, Gary, because it can't be broken Hmm. Yeah. What other questions you got for us? Um, did you think like your deck could be better or no? Always. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. There were a lot of uh there were a lot of cards that I didn't have time to test. I made a lot of changes the night prior. Um and usually I make changes all the way up to the day of, but I decided just to focus on this tournament was about getting enough sleep um both on friday and saturday so on friday i decided to make zero changes going into saturday i would just play the deck as i had built it friday night as intended um, <laughs> yeah um some of those changes that i made friday and thursday or so weren't as good as i had hoped to be um some cards didn't plan pan out as well uh there weren't enough swarmy decks for prompto was ever good um uh, yeah no one ever let me have value yeah, it just wasn't that good period. Um, I would keep it in the deck because I think that as Mono Water becomes more popular, that that card gets better. Um, but it just wasn't good for me in that particular tournament. Uh, Masked Woman um, doesn't do much. You know, again, the deck struggles against aggro decks, and it seems like Masked Woman would help with that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that you can afford to even just... For example, like if, if there are pressures from like something like a Lua, then you really just can't afford that. Right, because so. you don't have like a in Earth Windex, you have Cactor to kind of ping down the Alua and then drop Mass Woman stuff like that, where there's not that kind of setup in your deck. I don't think. I mean, you could time berries, but it feels pretty bad <laughs> most of the time. Yeah. Do you mind if I ask you some questions, Jesse? Mm -hmm. What was your favorite person that you played against? Talk about your favorite matchup. My favorite matchup was when I played Ben. Because he, like, it was hard for me, and it was, like, it was easy for me and hard for him. And then hard for me, it started, at the end, it started getting hard for me. Because then he would just play Genesis and stuff. So you mean, like, it was a good back-and-forth game? Yeah, so then, like, I had, like, three backups playing other cards, just attacking. He had six points of damage, and then he just started Genesis for me. And then, um, playing other cards. So was it, did you end up cutting the Yang from your deck? Because I know you had a Yang at one point. So you still had the Yang, but you just never drew it. Well, I played it and then, and then he just broke it. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, do you, what do you use to break it? Um, one of those cards that are odd numbers, like three, five, seven. Zalera? Eight. Yeah. You just use that. But it has to be dull. Yes. Oh, that, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so it was dull because I didn't play it at the right time. Like, he broke one of my characters, and then I only had four, so then I had to attack with it. Doesn't it always have Brave, or? Um, I think it only has Brave if you have a, a certain amount of characters. Yeah, if you have five characters, it gains Brave. And oh, okay. I thought for some reason that it had plus something at that point but it, it's it's plus something and brave at that point yeah so if you control five or more earth characters he gains 1000 power and brave um, oh that's that's rough that's rough beats man so so yeah he can't become dull ever by your opponent's uh summons or abilities but but, you attack. but if you attack yeah he, he ends up being dull it's rough and i didn't have bomadie because i kept hitting it to damage yeah what was your favorite thing about the crystal cup my favorite thing was like when it was hard, but then it was like, it was hard, but then it was like fun because people were like playing deck and they weren't doing, they weren't going like, they weren't going like, and they were nice because they were like trading for not the money for other cards and then they were, were nice. They didn't just it was like, haha, in your face, I beat you. Bye bye. <laughs> so, so you had opponents that were pretty good sports. Yeah. Yeah, and I know that that resentment isn't shared with everyone, um, but I will say that of my seven matchups and my uh, my quarterfinals, the uh, top sixteen and my top thirty-two. Um, so what would that what would that give me? Ten, op ten opponents. All ten of my opponents were gracious in both victory and defeat. Um, all ten of them were excellent sports, whether they won or lost, um, and that's actually pretty rare. Uh, even in our great community, as we call it, mm -hmm. Final Fantasy, um, usually you have a lot of salt. Um, I, I will admit, end of round six, when I lost the fourth time to deck out, or third time to deck out, I, was, I, I wasn't I was like I'm mad at my opponent, but I was just sitting there like, oh, not again, I can't believe it. Like, I'm one turn away from winning again. <laughs> like, and uh, yeah, it was, it was rough. I got I got really lucky, you know. That doesn't. I feel like a lot of times you have you have salt. There was uh one or two opponents that I had to ask to like play a little bit faster. Um, what one of them uh was super amazing about it was like I know man, you're just you're you're forcing my hand here a lot, and, and your deck's very difficult to navigate against. Um, and he was super polite. Um, the other guy was not so happy about it. Um. <laughs> didn't understand what, what the big deal was because I said, well, it's been close to a five minute turn. And then, you know, it was the same, the turn before. And he said, well, has it been five minutes yet? And I'm like, no, but close. It was like four minutes and 30 seconds. I was watching because the clock was behind him. Yeah. I tried yeah. to position myself so I can see the clock. Um, and it had been, every turn was very similar to that. And so, um, but at, at the end of the game, he was very friendly. So I was, it was whatever. Um, it, and I felt, and it was one of those instances where I didn't want to escalate to a judge call because um, I was about to win anyway. I didn't see it going to time if we picked up the pace. Mm -hmm. um, had he not, or you know, then I may I may have called the judge. But I felt like um, everyone was pretty cool. Everyone was really nice. I didn't have any problems. What about you, Jesse? Did you? So you said that all your points were really nice. Mm -hmm. Was that your? That was your favorite part. What is uh? Let me ask you this, cause you're you're new. How, how old are you, Jesse? Seven. Seven. And this is your first major Final Fantasy tournament. And then you now you want to go to Toronto, right? That's your next goal. <laughs> and you're gonna ask uh, your grandma to pay for that flight. Is is the goal? What are you gonna play if you were to go to Toronto? Probably the same deck. Mono yeah. Earth. Yeah. What what would you change if you had to make changes to your deck? What would you change? Probably, maybe change. Um, the the seven to fifteen. So like my Ignis can give all of my forwards break and plus one thousand. So play more fifteen characters. How many were you not playing all of the Noctuses? I was playing all. You played six Noctus. No, I was playing three. Oh, three. That's what I'm saying. So you weren't playing the full package. Okay. What about Gladius? Got? Are you playing three? Yeah. And in Ignis, were you playing three? And then Prompto, I was playing three. Oh, and Prompto. So you almost had the full 15, but you would want more 15. He's just missing the car. <laughs> You're just missing... The... Well, he's missing two drop Noctis, too. Well, I, yeah, I was saying, like, for the whole uh -oh. the four-man crew. Oh, okay. there. <laughs> they, could, they could push the car. That's what happens when you play Mono Earth, too, right? You push the car. <laughs>
Um, but it's a, it's a, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun event. Um, what was your favorite card that you played against? What, what was the most fun that you saw your opponents having? Not necessarily the most fun for you. <laughs> or what was the card that you struggled the most against? Yuri. Yuri, for sure. Yeah. And, and like I would just play characters, they would just don't free them. And I would be like, I can't play any more characters. If so don't. would you think about running like Finrahar in your um, Earth deck? It's the two CP summon that can break a light or dark character, and if you pay four, you can exile it instead. Does this seem like a good choice? What about Veritas? Would you run Veritas? Oh, Veritas. That's that's the hard. That's the and that's the most difficult character to play against. Veritas. Because Veritas, when it breaks, I just pick any character, and I thought it was a forward, so then I just picked a forward. Ooh. Oh. Because my opponent didn't tell me that it was a. Oh yeah, what did they say? They were just like, pick any one of these up here. Oh, oh, you got sharked. It's not your fault, though, bud. That's not your fault. Now you know next time. You want to call them out on stream? Do you know what their name was? I was waiting for just name immediately. <laughs> the Noctis guy. Ooh, Noctis. the Noctis Playmat guy. So tell me that story real quick. So I was, I, I killed the, um, I killed the Veritas not knowing that you could pick a backup, uh -huh. and then I picked a forward. Okay. He, said, he was just like, pick one of these. Oh, he he said like this and pointed? Yeah. So then I was like, okay. Well, that seems kind of right because it, when it comes in, you break it forward. That's true. You do break it forward when it comes in. So what are you going to do next time? You're not, you're not sure about a ruling. Read huh? Read the card or call a change. Both. Oh, yeah. He knows Read better the than most people. He know he knows both of the right answers. <laughs> read the judge and call or read, read the, the judge and call the card. Yes, read, both. Read, read the card and call the judge. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I hope that that gets fixed for you next time. Maybe next time you'll be able to play some Veritas and the. You'll get a lot of practice against Veritas at locals, I'm sure. So. Oh yeah, that card's on the up the uprising for sure. All right. So first off, I want to say thank you for joining us. Uh, Jesse, do you have anyone you want to thank? Any shout outs? Any people you want to say hi to? Now's your time. Um, I give a shout out to Cody. I wish <laughs> he could be here today. Yeah. Anyone else? No? It's like, nah. <laughs> okay. No other shout outs. That's <laughs> it. Right. That's that. So the people that helped him get there, you guys that he practices at locals, nothing. Mom, nothing. Roommates, nothing. People that loaned him the cards, nothing. <laughs> People that bought him the hat he's wearing, nothing. People that drove him there, nothing. All right, bud. All right, bud. I think it's actually your bedtime. I think I think it's your bedtime. So uh, yeah, I think we're gonna call that a cast. <laughs> um, thanks for joining us. I've been Samsonite Prime. Jesse James. I'm Zach Burrell, and we'll see you next time. Hey everybody, thanks for taking the time to listen to the Chuckle Bros Podcast. Be sure to drop us a like and comment on our Facebook page, or subscribe and comment on the YouTube page. If you have any comments and suggestions, especially about Cody's awesome hair, feel free to drop us a DM. And of course, don't forget to check out CardiVillies.com and use promo code Chuckle Bros to get 10% off your next order.